Welcome to the 2.55 notes on polynomial inequalities. So first let's do a warm up problem solving for x in an inequality and then writing it in an interval in set notation. So first looking at our first example, we have negative four x plus four is greater than 20. We'll first start by subtracting four so that we're left with negative four x is greater than 16, then dividing by negative four. When we do this, we're gonna flip our sign. So when we multiply or divide by a negative number, we flip our sign. So we're gonna have x is less than negative four. So when we go to graph that, we're gonna have an open circle above our four and the arrow going towards negative infinity. And our interval notation will be from negative infinity up to negative four using parentheses. And our set notation is x such that x is less than negative four. Go ahead and take a moment and try solving number two on your own. Looking at our second example, we could divide by negative two as our first step. Another option would be to distribute that negative two on the inside right here to each of our values inside our parentheses. If we continue with dividing by negative two, we will flip our sign again. So we have three is greater than or equal to x plus two, which is greater than negative five. We can then subtract two from both sides, leaving us with one is greater than or equal to x, which is greater than negative seven. When we go to draw our number line, we always wanna do it in numerical order. So we will have an open circle above negative seven up to one with a closed circle. So our interval notation will be from negative seven up to one with one being a bracket because of that closed in circle. And our set notation will be x such that x is between negative seven and one. Now that we have recapped how to solve for an inequality, now we can solve polynomial inequalities. So looking at our first example, we have x minus one times x plus three times x minus three is greater than zero. So our first step is we wanna solve for our points on our number line. So we can set each of our parts in parentheses equal to zero. So we have x minus one equals zero, which will give us x equals one. x plus three equals zero gives us x equals negative three. And x minus three equals zero gives us x is equal to three. So I first start plotting those on our number line over here, just so we have an idea of where we need to look. So then we can compare our points to where we need to see if this inequality is true or not. So I first start setting up this table. I first do our first line up here, and I put all the points where we want to look at where x is true or not. So I would first start by doing x is less than negative 3 to account for this area. Then I would do x is between negative 3 and 1, which would account for this area. Then another section between 1 and 3 to account for this area. And then x is greater than 3. The next step to setting up the table would be to put each of our parts of our polynomial in its own line. So that way we can evaluate each of these inequalities at those points. And then in our bottom line, I would put our whole polynomial so that way I can see what our result would be. When we go to evaluate our parts of our inequalities, we're just gonna notice if that value would be negative or positive. So when we do that, if we look at our number line, we would have anywhere from x is less than three, so choose a point, let's say negative four. So negative four minus one would be negative five, so that's a negative number. And then negative four plus three would be negative one, which is still a negative number. Negative four minus three would be negative seven, another negative number. So we wanna look at what all these equals. So we have a negative times a negative times a negative. Well, looking at the first two, a negative times a negative creates a positive. 
and then a positive times another negative makes a negative. So we are going to put our negative symbol here. We want to repeat that process for each of these. So choosing a number between negative 3 and 1, the easiest might be 0. So 0 minus 1 gives us a negative number. 0 plus 3 gives us a positive number. 0 minus 3 gives us a negative. So a negative times a positive makes a negative, and a negative times a negative gives us a positive, resulting in our last line making a positive. Then we have a number between 1 and 3. Let's say 2. We would have 2 minus 1 is a positive number. 2 plus 3 is a positive number. 2 minus 3 is a negative number. So a positive times a positive is another positive, and a positive times a negative creates a negative would be our resulting sign. Lastly, we want to choose a number greater than 3. So let's say positive 4. 4 minus 1 is a positive. 4 plus 3 is a positive. 4 minus 3 is a positive. So we have three positives being multiplied, which will result in a positive sign here. So now we want to go back and look at our symbol in our inequality statement. And we had that our polynomial is greater than zero. So if something is greater than zero, we want to look at where all these are positive. So I'd like to make a note, I chose a smiley face, of where our polynomial created a positive number, and that is between negative three and one, and when x is greater than three. So then we will use our skills from our previous warm up to graph that. So we have x is between negative 3 and 1, which would be this area. We would use open circles because we are not having anything be equal to. And then x is greater than 3. Once again, using that open circle and our arrow going all the way up to infinity. So our solution, we would write in interval notation or set notation, but we have had more practice in intervals, so we'll continue with that. So we're going to have from negative 3 up until 1, and then using our union symbol, that u, then 3 up until infinity. For our polynomial inequality problems, we want to first factor our polynomial, find where we have zeros at, which would be 1, negative 3, and 3 in this case. Then we want to make a table using our three points that we had just found to then find the areas either above and below it or in between our points. Then finding our positive and negative values and then considering are we looking for something that's greater than zero or less than zero. Once we have figured that out, we can analyze our table looking at our bottom portion. If it's supposed to be greater than zero, we're gonna look for those positive values. If it's supposed to be negative, we're looking for those negative values. Graphing it, and then writing our interval notation. So let's do another problem. So this one, we have a 19 on our right hand side. So we first wanna get that over to our simplified form. So we are going to move it over to the left side by subtracting. So we will get x cubed minus x squared minus 32x plus 60 is less than or equal to zero. Take a moment on your own to use your calculator by graphing and looking at the table to find where we have zeros at in this problem. So once you have figured it out on your calculator, you should get it in a factored form. So we'd have x minus two times x minus five times x plus six is less than or equal to zero. So we would have our zeros at two, five, and negative six. I first go ahead and graph these on our number line. We can put a closed end circle above these values already because we know those are our zeros. Those are gonna be equal to zero. So we can enclose those. Now we wanna set up our table by looking at those values on our number line. So we wanna set 
one up, so x is less than or equal to negative 6. x is between negative 6 and 2. x is between 2 and 5, and x is greater than 5. So using those values that are in between are closed in circles. Next, for our table, we are going to set up our chart so that way we can determine positive or negative. So we're going to separate our polynomial into each parenthesis. So we have x minus 2, x minus 5, x plus 6, and then all those being multiplied our whole polynomial in our last line. Then we want to go ahead and evaluate. So we choose a value where x is less than 6, say negative 7. When we plug that in for x minus 2, we're going to get a negative. For x minus 5, we'll also get a negative. x plus 6, we'll also get a negative. When those are combined, we will get a negative value. When x is between negative 6 and 2, say 0, you'll get a negative value, then another negative, and then a positive. A negative times a negative creates a positive, and a positive times a positive is another positive value. Then for a value between 2 and 5, we could choose 3, for example. We would get a positive, a negative, and another positive. When we multiply those out, we will remain in a negative value. And when we choose a value greater than or equal to 5, we will have a positive value because all of our multiples are positive. So now we want to compare our last line here what is being asked in the question. So for this, we want to find one that is less than zero. So less than zero would be a negative number. So it would be when x is less than negative six and x is between two and five. So we can go back up to our graph and graph these values. So we have x is less than six and x is between 2 and 5. We can then go ahead and write this in interval notation. So we'll have from negative infinity up until negative 6 using a bracket, union from 2 until 5. So this would be our solution. In our last example, if you did not want to graph it, you could use synthetic division for this. So our first step would be doing the rational root test, then go ahead and testing the values. So we find one of our zeros happens at positive one. We can then use synthetic division using this polynomial now down here. So 15 is still our last value. So we will test those numbers once again, and we will find that negative 3 is a 0. Then lastly, doing the same process using our previous polynomial, we will find that negative 5 is a solution, and our last solution is also going to be negative 1. Looking at our last values down here, where we would have 1x plus 1 as our remainder. And then setting those equal to zero, we can plot those on our number line over here. So we would have negative five, negative three, negative one, and zero, all with closed in circles. Looking at our inequality, we have that equal to symbol, so it'll be closed in circles. We then want to go through and start our table so that x is less than five, or x is between negative five and negative three or x is between negative three and one, or x is between negative three and negative one, or x is between negative three and positive one, or x is greater than positive one. Then separating our polynomial into its factored form, we can then go ahead and evaluate each of those looking for our positive and negative values. After multiplying all of our factors, we will find that our polynomial is greater than zero when x is less than five, x is between negative three and negative one, and x is greater than one. Then going back up to our number line, we can go ahead and graph that. So we would have an arrow going from negative infinity up until negative five, 
two solid points connected from negative 3 until negative 1 and from 1 up until infinity. So our interval notation or solution would be negative infinity up until negative 5 with a bracket, union from negative 3 until negative 1, both with brackets in that case, and union 1 until infinity. And remembering with infinity, we use parentheses because they are such large numbers that we will never reach those. That concludes our notes for this section. There are three practice problems below. The first one going based off our first problem today, our second one looking similar to our second problem, and our third looking more similar to our last problem. One thing to note with these, if we are going to do synthetic division, we need to make sure our values are going from greatest until smallest based on our x exponents. And then making sure we have zero on the right hand side. And remember to set up your table based on your zeros and look where they meet the requirements of greater than or less than zero. Please let us know if you have any questions and have a great day.